Good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Let's play and continue our uh, studies about the apostolic. Um, let me just begin with a word of prayer. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, for um, this opportunity to learn your word. Father, we know that you're pouring out your spirit. And God, that, uh, Lord, you are releasing, oh God, the anointing of the apostolic. Father, even as we learn, we pray that, Lord, you will give us the grace, Lord, uh, to be apostolic in all that we do. And Father, we pray, Lord, for a deep understanding and wisdom and, uh, Lord, uh, your ideas so that we can live to fulfill the purposes, Lord, that you have for us. We thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So let's uh, get back into our notes here. We did uh, till chapter 3 and chapter 4 we started where we explained about the uh, apostolic as being pioneering or as something that is used by God to extend his kingdom. We saw a key verse, just the way in uh, the prophetic we were saying about the simple gift of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3. That is one of the key scriptures here in the apostolic 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. That would be the one of the primary. Yeah, one of the primary verses. And there when we see the word first, first apostle, that word first in the Greek is proton. And proton means first in time, first in order, rank, importance. Um, we know that this is not an hierarchy where God is trying to classify the fivefold ministry offices, uh, uh, you know, in, um, in, in certain, you know, in a certain manner where some come under the other. It's not like that. But in terms of the order. So we know, obviously, the apostle is the one who will go and who will start the work. So pioneering work. And we saw that some of the first things that the apostles do is to bring understanding of new truth and revelation. So in terms of the understanding of the word, see, for example, healing was always there in the scriptures. We have already seen, you know, Jesus healing people, the apostles, the believers moving in healing. But we know that from, um, you know, in, in the restorative moves of God, there was a certain century where the truth about healing became so real that people started understanding it and when we understand it we start to move in it so that's what it means when we say new truth and revelation where it already exists in scripture but it's as if god is breathing on that truth and uh, people are able to function in it so that is the responsibility or the work of an apostle new truth new revelation then uh, expansion into new territories. This we have been seeing that uh, it can be geographical or it can be spheres. And later, leading from the front. So that is, again, a quality of the ap apostles. They are very strong leaders. Now, talking a little bit more about the apostle, we would say that an apostle the way we said for the prophetic, the prophet. What is the difference between a simple uh, gift, a believer who is prophesying and a prophet? We use some terms there. Office. Office. One more term. Uh, yeah, grace gift is different. Yeah, level is different. Uh, governmental authority. Same we'll apply here for apostles. So somebody who's in the office we will say they carry governmental authority and even, you know, governmental anointing. And uh, that means that they carry um, a grace to break through. So it's really amazing what God can do through apostles. Um, and um, so, you know, that is something we have to remember. It's not just a little bit of the apostolic that is demonstrated, but governmental authority, governmental anointing. Then apostles lay the foundation for lasting works. Let's quickly read Ephesians 2 and verse 20. So if one of us can... Yeah, even in... Okay, here in class. 
to place my name. Having been built on the foundation of our hopes, Jesus Christ himself being the chief form. Mm. The whole building being fitted to the doors to the church with the building. Mm. So the church is compared to a building and it becomes a strong building when it has a strong foundation. And what the scriptures tell us uh, is that prophets and apostles, they form the foundation of the temple of God or the house of God. So we cannot ignore the prophet and apostle. If we ignore then what is it? We are ignoring the very foundation on which the house of God is built. So we must give importance for uh, for uh, the calling of an apostle. Apostles, if when we look at them being the foundation, in terms of execution, how can we see it? You know, in terms of execution, we said that they enter new territories, they pioneer new things, but at the same time, they are also known for planting churches. Okay, so uh, that is very much connected to the apostle planting of new churches when churches grow. Okay, so that is connected. We must remember that. Then apostles will execute the plans of God on the earth, in cities, in nations, and the way they work. We see that Paul in 1 Corinthians 3.10, you know, he says that I laid the foundations like a, a wise master builder. So it shows us that apostles are very strategic. You know, some of us, we may, I mean, if we are not uh, functioning with this grace and anointing, we may think of doing something good like, okay, we planted a church, one church, two churches by the grace of God, and that's great. We may not have foresight to think very long term. But when it comes to the apostle, they're very strategic. So Paul says, like a wise master builder. See, when we construct a home, uh, we may see just the first level and think, Okay, you know, the person who constructed it intended to build only one level. But it actually depends on what kind of foundation they have laid. You know, sometimes we see these buildings. You have like 30 floors, 38 floors. What about the foundation? I'm sure even if we see one level, the person who wants to build 38 floors has a deep foundation, which we have no idea about. So that's how the apostolic works. We may think one year, two years, but generally apostles think like decades, generations. How do we build in such a way? Okay, how do we raise leaders in such a way? How do we plant churches in such a way? Okay, or uh, administration, church administration, plan it in such a way, like a wise master builder. So then when the construction actually happens, when you see the work growing, it's quite strategic, the way it, it unfolds. And obviously, when it is strategic, it will sustain. It will sustain for many, many years to go. So that is part of the apostolic anointing. Very strategic. You know, it's not just that uh, planting churches is a good idea. Let's plant 10 churches, 100 churches. Then what? What's the strategy? So the apostolic is, is very um, uh, tuned into the divine plan of God and works in such a way that the plans are executed in, in a wise manner. So that is part of the apostolic and the work of an apostle. Apostles guard doctrine. So what we understand by that? See, whenever anything opposes the word of God, or let's say people uh, come into some form of error, the apostles generally can't take it. Okay. As we see in Acts 15, we have talked about it. The Gentiles were asked to be circumcised for salvation, which is not a correct teaching. One does not have to be circumcised to be saved. So when this came up, we read that, you know, Paul, Barnabas, they became so upset. They, in fact, you know, they got into uh, something like um, uh, argument with those who were teaching this error. So that is the apostle. We won't find that they will, you know, sit down and take anything. 
especially when there is error in doctrine the apostles will be so upset they'll jump in and try to resolve it right so the matter of circumcision was one such matter we also see when it came to uh um you know uh, communion communion how should communion be taken what about communion paul had very strong instructions this is how you should do it this is the right way to do it okay so uh, and even like timothy when timothy is going to take over as a bishop imagine if paul was not careful about the doctrine he would say timothy just be a good leader take care of all the people you know run the church have it uh, grow for three decades job well done not not at all like that the way he mentored and he handed over to timothy was again very strategic he writes first timothy second timothy he tells timothy take heed to the doctrine be careful uh, you hand over to faithful and able men so uh, we find that the doctrine is very important doctrine is very important and the apostles will guard the doctrine any the form of error uh, you know wind of wrong doctrine uh, we will find that the apostles will stand up against it okay because they need to protect the uh, foundation or the or the right kind of doctrine so that's part of the apostolic so sometimes we may wonder like why are they getting so uh, worked up they can just let it be but that's not part of their nature or the anointing so they are very very particular about accuracy when it comes to doctrine now uh, other things to teach and establish people in god's word we see that in the life of paul that uh, he was a teacher as much as he was an apostle so in his writings we find uh, so much clarity isn't it like every sentence every word there is clarity about what one needs to believe what one needs to do how should the christian life be lived how should the ministry be done what about the anointing what about the gifts this clarity right about everything and we find that paul taught he taught how much did he teach in fact in the book of acts there is one place where paul is in the roman uh, prison okay it's a it's a like a house prison and over there his friends are allowed they can come and listen to him so it, those verses say from morning to evening he taught i was wondering what what is teaching morning to evening is continuously teaching so obviously there is so many things that he wanted to impart in the believers before he knew his time was up but he had to make sure that the word was imparted accurately strongly in the believers so that is very apostolic teach the word equip the believers so that once see paul was gone but timothy was able to do the work because he knew how exactly it needs to be done so the teaching of the word is a part of the apostolic then uh, apostles activate and equip believers for spiritual ministry obviously like every other fivefold ministry office apostles also are involved in equipping the believers then apostles raise up other leaders and ministries so usually we look at this term called as spiritual father uh, so a spiritual father is someone who nurtures a son right in uh, the natural a father is someone uh, a, a father whom we regard as someone who raises us up you know in the right ways Uh, so that we can be a blessing in the society or community the same way when it comes to spiritual fathering it has to do with um developing a believer into maturity that is spiritual fathering spiritual maturity so when we are um you know mentoring guiding nurturing or we may use the word developing developing the people especially leaders especially leaders why do we need leaders <coughs> can not one apostle do all the work okay then why why do we need leaders okay to organize the ministry correct we need more hands um, we need more people on board 
then we can do better vision okay to extend the vision we need more people as part of that large vision to yeah why do we need leaders okay to oversee correct so we need more people to oversee a large work that's also true any other reasons mm -hmm. yeah developing a leader is uh, an apostle's work it it is part of the other fivefold also but primarily the apostle <laughs> apostles have more work yeah actually in that sense yes everyone is working but uh, it looks like apostle has to stretch themselves beyond their comfort zone a lot yes they need to be able to travel and minister nina responsibility to share responsibility more more leaders yeah great hmm? structure ha huh. okay mm, okay uh, i didn't quite get that but yeah we'll think about it uh, so yeah all these reasons we see that in the kingdom of god god calls everyone isn't it everyone is called ephesians 4 11 to 13 says for the equipping of the saints for the ministry that means that every saint has a ministry and among the saints god has called many to be leaders in different areas so we must recognize god's calling on people's lives okay it already exists we have to recognize that and when we start to develop them another helpful thing is not only can we share the the uh, responsibility and expand but we can ensure what we call as longevity longevity simply means that the work can progress for many years even in the absence of that original leader or spiritual father right uh, and uh, so if we want to see the work progress they have got to be leaders if there are no leaders with the you know with that one apostle uh, closing the ministry everything it may be a big work everything will come to a standstill quite soon because nobody knows how to do nobody knows how to handle and take care of the work right but longevity it's one of the main reasons the work can go on whether that person is uh, in their you know in in their um, prime able to do the works or not others can take over the leaders are also there they are well equipped thoroughly equipped and the work can keep continuing so longevity is a very important reason uh, i think uh, was it pastor in one of the sermons he was saying the day we enter the the ministry that is the day we must start planning for the exit like when i exit who's going to take over you know what structures exist these are all questions to ask on day one uh and so longevity is important um so raising up leaders ministries then uh, not only developing them at the right time we call it ordination or commissioning sending people out because by that time they have built the confidence now it's time that we send them out so sending them out is also necessary giving them responsibility but of course you know we keep in touch with them we stay connected we coordinate a lot of such things happen uh, in order to work together with many leaders so the whole aspect of uh, in and up even some churches call themselves apostolic so in those churches we find that there are many churches there are many pastors leaders but they have good networks they work together they have like an annual meeting regional meeting this and that so the network so those kind of ministries or church planting movements they call themselves or you know apostolic churches uh, they have all this connecting and networking with one another 
so an apostle is uh, has the ability to initiate this so that there are many leaders working together then uh, apostles establish order in the church when we see the writings of paul sometimes we wonder hey paul is traveling somewhere why is he you know getting upset about a matter or getting so so sensitive about some church where uh, a person is suffering so paul says that like i get i get upset when i hear something that is off in a in a, a church that was established so even though paul is traveling on he is still connected as a spiritual father to that church and we notice that you know he 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 is able to oversee and he is able to guide he is able to uh, even instruct for crisis meaning for example corinthian church you know they are flowing in the gifts of the spirit but they are so carnal so he is able to instruct and say look you are so good when it comes to the gifts but when it comes to maturity this is not working out let me tell you this is how you should be this is how you should flow in the gifts so he is even able to address you know crisis situations and establish order so that's another thing we will see about the apostles they like order anything which is disorderly they cannot you know sort of put up with that so it comes with the anointing because obviously and if we don't have order and the work expands you imagine the chaos right it will become so confusing and so chaotic so order is something they engage in um and we find that apostles are in their position of um authority they speak with leaders and uh, you know like um people in high ranks that is seen even in paul's life he goes and he speaks to the governor he speaks to you know the the king uh, and later on even he seeks audience with the emperor so it's part of the anointing god gives opportunities to to speak or proclaim the truth to those who are in authority and uh, we find that apostles display godly independence that means that they are they are like go getters you know they whether anyone is there or not there they run they are strong enough to function by themselves they don't need like a large team to come along every time you know whenever possible yes but otherwise they can function by themselves so in the case of paul again uh, there is the description here from galatians 1 15 to 19 where he says that as soon as i uh, encountered the lord i did not immediately go to jerusalem he went after a while and he only went for 15 days to spend some time with peter uh, and you know it was not like he was trying to trying to get into the company of the apostles and then get their validation no he just waited for the right time to meet with peter so they can manage by themselves because they tend to have you know very strong um uh vision and uh, that that stirring in their hearts so they show godly independence and apostles can manifest supernatural signs and wonders we see this in the book of acts and also you know end your persecution so those are all some common things that we've already understood so why are we trying to understand this word apostle we know that god is pouring out his anointing right and we are going to see many people in this office so when we see them how to identify them so defining the word is helpful in identifying people who may be functioning you know with all these terms now usually when we do this course people ask questions uh, is so and so an apostle so and so an apostle use all this information if uh, you know a good number of these these characteristics are a part of that individual or are, are a part of that ministry we can say that they are apostles and also 
in today's um, scenario when we are still trusting god you know for many apostles to rise up there can be a little bit of confusion here and there uh, and uh, identifying may be difficult but that's okay the revelation of who an apostle is and what the apostolic is is only growing and it will get better and better okay so we saw mainly characteristics of the present day apostles and the next section here describes the word apostle in greater detail again what is the intention so that we can understand when we see these things okay and in fact um, that's word study over there they've taken from um one of the books on apostolic ministry and uh, it has 50 points okay so if we go through all the 50 points one by one we'll be sitting here till next semester mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm just going to highlight you know the key ones uh, which may be unique as compared to what we've already discussed so let's uh, begin with the the meaning of the word apostle meaning of the word apostle we know it comes from the greek word apostolos where apo means from and stolos means i send and uh, it's taken we usually call it transliterated word meaning it's taken exactly like that from that language and used because it was a military word and we know that there were ambassadors or representatives of the military who were sent to new territory in order to establish the kingdom and establish kingdom means establish the teaching establish the lifestyle establish the culture of the kingdom that they come from so apostle is exactly that but in a spiritual sense that's what an apostle does go into new territory establish the kingdom ways establish the teaching establish the culture so that uh we have points from 1 all the way till about 10 to 11 which are describing the same thing okay so in verse 9 uh, point 9 it's it, there are many other words that are used to describe a person who is apo is functioning in that apostolic anointing terms like initiator crusader revivalist you know we hear all these words isn't it so sometimes people use these terms to describe the quality or the characteristics that we have discussed um and sometimes even missionary is used missionary because they go out into new places but is there a difference between apostle and missionary what do you think yeah okay so what could be the difference between apostle and missionary Mm. Okay. Okay. So apostles will start the work and hand it over, but missionaries will stay and continue, continue the work. Okay. Fine. So, hmm. Who? Missionaries. Yeah. They'll go to different places. But what is the main difference? Hmm. Pioneer. Missionary can also be pioneer. Huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So we are understanding they may not lay a foundation for a long term work. It may not have many dimensions like how an apostle may do. You know that foresight, planning, strategy. all that may be missing in a missionary's work a missionary may go and do some good work we know right many such missionaries they have done some good work till today it carries on but not necessarily plant churches because of that churches did not come up or uh, leaders did not come up right so that's the difference that apostolic uh, or uh, governmental authority all that is lacking in case of a missionary but can a missionary be an apostle yeah there is a possibility so a missionary can be uh, an apostle sometimes but not all missionaries are apostles fine 
So we are clear about that. And um, some more new thoughts here are in point 16, we see apostles are able to pioneer new truth and revelation and bring them into new territories. So as a proton or the first to bring out these things and into new territories, it simply means, uh, let's just take for example, um, like I remember when uh, we were uh, doing these conferences about kingdom builders, kingdom builders, first time when pastor wrote that book and it came out, it was mind blowing. Like when we sat and we heard, right, the conference, we were like, wow, it's there in the Bible, but just that we've not seen it. We've not understood it. It was amazing. And then we were taking it to different cities in India. And I remember I had also been, I think it was taught in Mysore. So we all went to Mysore. And when it was being taught, I could sense the same thing like all the pastors who had joined. They were also like, wow. You know, we've never thought of it like this. So that's the new truth, kingdom building. How do we work together as ministers of God? It becomes very practical and you start to use it, you start to apply it. Now it's almost probably been a, been a decade, right, since then. But it's something that a lot of ministers are probably using and they are living by. They're doing their ministries like that. But then when it, when, uh, in, in those years when it was being preached, uh, for me, that was the first. Maybe there are other ministers also who have preached it. But it was, it was amazing because it brings out a new dimension that we can use and apply. You know, house of God. Suddenly you're like, oh, really? Yes, of course. You know, this is what the church is all about. Till that day, we're reading the Bible. It says, yeah, you're the living stones, this and that. We're reading it. But it hits you. That's the new revelation and the new truth and take into new territories. That means, okay, we've, we've uh, shared it in a city and then it keeps going to another city, another city, you know, other parts of the world and brings in that, you, you may say like revives the people and we are able to live by it. So that's how it actually works. Then uh, we see that apostles, they are pioneers. So pioneers, we know that they start new work. Okay, what else is important about a pioneer? Pioneers, because of the kind of confidence that they carry, I'm on point 17. We also know that they instill confidence among the believers or the disciples or other leaders. So we generally think this can't be done, right? But when it is done, for example, last year of youth missions, I think some of you were there. So when we had the idea of youth missions, you were like, how are we going to do it? You know, how are we going to bring people from other parts of India? It's not easy. Like they all, we have to coordinate to book the tickets and, you know, different things. Uh, so it was challenging. But when we actually did it, right? Now, every time it is done, the next, like if it's done the next time, we have a benchmark already. So we will probably do it better than what was done the last year. But that thought and that idea, right? Like again, to pastor, he was the one who suggested it. We were like, are you sure? Can we even do this? This sounds crazy. You know, it sounds really big to do. But then what happens in the apostolic is once it's done, it instills confidence. A lot of people will then be like, hey, actually, you can you can do it. You know, let's let's do it again. And uh, we may find similar patterns being used in other places. So that's the work of a pioneer. Uh, and as I said, use the word scary. Sometimes it can be very scary because they could just jump in and do things for the first time ever. Right. And it needs a lot of boldness, courage. But once it is done, others will have confidence, right? So that is a pioneering work. And we'll see that in the body of Christ, uh, there, there will be people who do things for the first time. 
and it encourages us. Um, I'm not saying we have guest lectures here at uh, BC every week. And uh, when we listen to each one and the ministry that they are doing, so unique, isn't it? Now, when we see that one person is doing it, many others will think, yeah, it's possible. You know, I can have a creative business or I can work with prisoners. I can work with uh, children of migrant laborers. So that's an apostolic spirit. Now, we are not saying they are apostles, but they are apostolic believers. They are doing something new, and that is giving everyone confidence. Now, point 18, because of the nature of the anointing, you know, when the anointing is upon us, what is the anointing? The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that enables us to do something. So when we say anointing for healing, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that manifests healing. So we say anointing for teaching, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that enables us to teach, right? So when it comes to apostle, you know, it really makes a person so um, extraordinary. Like we, when we look at them or when we consider them, we may feel, wow, how do they do it? You know, do they have 24 hours or do they have like a little more than that every day to be able to do all these amazing things? But we must remember that an apostle is but a human being who carries an anointing. And therefore, in that point 18, there's something called as demystify. Demystify. Demystify simply means to not become, you know, so um, like overtaken or, you know, you, you literally feel like that human being is someone great. right? So we shouldn't get into that place. It's the anointing that makes anyone uh, so enabled and that we have to remember especially in the case of apostles so we continue on to some trends which um, we will ob observe in the present day apostolic now again there are supposed to be 60 trends okay and we will not go by uh, one by one so what are some trends that we can expect experience today in our world we've seen the apostle now apostolic trends one is we'll observe prophets and apostles rising up and we'll be able to recognize them so is it happening a lot right now maybe maybe not so obvious but in the coming days it will be it will become more and more obvious we'll find more like you know clear cut ah this is a prophet this is an apostle, right? Uh, so that is something we will see. We will see that in the church, because the apostolic is about demonstration of God's power. There will be greater emphasis on signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay. So how are we saying all these things? This is from uh, a writing from uh, an, an apostle called John Eckert. And uh, his observation and study of scriptures, he has put down these things. You know, what he's, we see in the book of Acts, very similarly, we are going to see many of these things happen. Uh, and so we can get ready for it. More signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, if, if at all, there's only the uh, rational, intellectual preaching of the word, right? Uh, we'll find that there'll be a hunger for the demonstration of the power also. It's not bad, just intellectual teaching of the word, but the way it used to be, as far as Jesus' ministry is concerned, or the ministry of the apostles, both teaching and the power. So that will become evident in many churches. Right? We'll see more of that. Then we'll see greater insight into the mysteries of God. We've already spoken about it. Why greater insight into the mysteries of God? So that we can function in the purposes of God. Okay, when we understand what prophetic is, only then we can prophesy correctly. We can be a blessing to others. So insight 
so that we can function in it right and not only that when we have insight it also brings maturity so the more knowledge of god we gain uh we can we are growing in the lord and you know we are becoming stronger in the lord so for maturity sake also so we'll find that so many churches you know it it's more than just going on a sunday and coming back deeper truth insight so that we can do what god is calling us to do we can become more mature in god so they'll start hungering for these things then we'll see that there'll be uh, a vision and outreach of the church so you know somewhere uh, it may have become comfortable for many churches to just do church so what is doing church uh, have a good sunday service you know have so many hundreds or thousands of families connected we do like nice media nice life groups and that's about it right but who's going to reach the city who's going to reach the nation what about the many causes around us where you know the church is supposed to be salt and light and make an impact okay these are questions but what we are going to see in the days to come is the church will have a vision to expand and do outreach because we have to make a mark on the world around us right and god is already doing it we find believers doing some amazing things pioneering some amazing ministries but in days to come it will be more and more and you know some people call it the uh, apostolic anointing uh, but then they also sometimes call it like proton anointing what is proton anointing just that yeah related to the apostolic that these new things will happen and um, ministries will emerge we'll also find new leaders and ministries uh, so right now i think in in nearly all the churches that i know of all pastors have their second line leadership right and they're training them pastors in training and because there is there is that understanding that we need the next generation okay uh, so that reality it's already becoming um, you know so important for ministers of god so then we'll see that more and more uh, new leaders will be identified uh, they will be confirmed ordained and uh, you know we will pray for them to activate the gifts of the spirit in their lives uh, send them out and help them also to do the ministry that god has called them to do so that is more of the apostolic okay uh, we'll also find that there will be an emphasis on remember we said doctrinal truth doctrinal truth but now biblical standards of leadership biblical standards of leadership that means see when we say leader we go back to the writings of paul to timothy and titus he says if one desires to be a bishop then they he, they must be like this you know this must be their conduct this must be their attitude so he writes many things but unfortunately in our world today we may see that uh, these standards are not followed or people don't adhere to these standards right but in the days to come there will be a call to get back to the biblical standards right? this is the right way to be a leader uh and uh, the apostolic is about that the apostolic will proclaim and uh, uh take the word out that we need to have the right standards you know it's not just good enough to be able to preach and teach but there are life standards whether it comes to you know uh, leading a team or family marriage how should one as a leader be so uh, enforcing biblical standards of leadership so i think there's like a lot of points maybe you need a break and uh, we'll come back on monday i'll pick up from here cover few more things about the apostolic and uh, hopefully wrap up the the chapter yeah great so any thoughts questions sounds like a lot of work <laughs> apostle has a lot of work to do
Great. So let's uh, pray then. We can pray and uh, close for today. I'll request other Nikhil or Prince. You can please lead us. Yeah. Please. Amen. And thank you, thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, everyone. So we shall meet on Monday. Um, okay. Monday, we have one hour class, uh, and the second hour is um, um, Pastor Paul's class. He has completed it. So I just want to request the online students also, if you can, please stay on. We can finish uh, the apostolic on Monday itself. We don't have to wait till Friday. So please do join in. Yeah. OK. Thank you for that response. See you on Monday. Thank you. Sure.